Hello, everyone. I am Chris Hyam, CEO of Indeed, and welcome to the next episode of Here to Help. This is our look at how Indeed has been navigating the global impact of COVID-19. Today is July 12th. We are on day 496 of Global Work From Home. Here at Indeed, one of our five core values is inclusion and belonging. And one way we practice that value is through employee-led organizations formed around traditionally underrepresented or marginalized groups in tech. These inclusion resource groups, or IRGs, help us share employees' unique experiences, perspectives, and passions, and actively support and guide our efforts. And they help us grow our business in a way that promotes inclusivity and a sense of belonging, both at Indeed and for job seekers and employers. One of our IRGs is the Veterans and Allies Resource Group, which was formed to honor, support, and empower the military community and our allies. And my guest today is Mario Carpenzano, physical security lead for the Americas, who is a veteran and an active member of the Veterans and Allies Resource Group. We'll be talking about Mario's time serving in the military, the transition from military service to civilian life, and how his experiences in the military helped him adapt to the demands of the pandemic. Mario, I am looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited too. Thanks, Chris. Well, let's start where we always start off with a check-in. How are you doing today right now? I'm good. Uh, you know, good nerves. Uh, excited to, to talk about this stuff. Great. Well, before we dive in, let's start a little bit with with your job. Can you tell us a little bit about how you help people get jobs? Sure. Um, as part of the physical security team, uh, we help keep our offices safe and secure and ensure everyone has what they need to be successful and not worry about, uh, you know, any safety or, or security measures. So your your life and your family, you have uh, quite deep ties into the military. Can you talk a little bit about the, the links you have and how that led you uh, yourself off to military school? Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, people uh, people always ask, how why did you decide to join the military? And I don't have the story of, I've always wanted to do it, or I thought it was great. I think it was more of a subconscious thing. My grandfather was uh, served during the Korean War. His three older brothers served during World War II, uh, one in Italy, uh, which for our, her- our Italian-American heritage, going I can only imagine that going back to Italy and fighting through uh, a country that your your uh, f- your family is from can be uh, something daunting. Uh, I've never got to ask my great uncle those questions. He passed away before I uh, I was born. But it was but the the military as always from a family standpoint has been something that uh, not an obligation but something that is uh, important. And and as uh, as immigrants to this country. Standing up for it, I think, was a lo- was a big deal, and 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 you know, putting your name on the line and being ready to defend it, I think, was a big deal. Um, and it kind of and that filtered down to me, and and you know, after high school, joining military school at a university was, which was one of was something my grandfather also gave me was make sure you go to college. It was uh, it was a way of me seeing, you know, of getting a feel for that, and 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 if the military was right for me. So could you talk a, a little bit about that experience of, of your early days in military school? Sure. Uh, I mean, I started, you know, my first actual day of classes was 9-11, which we only went to one class. I mean, I think a lot of people, if you were if you're about my age, you probably had a very similar experience. Uh, I would have been so I, Norwich University is a military school, one of the senior military colleges of the United States. And uh I was at school for, you know, the better part of a month doing, you know, learning to march and 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 being yelled at to do push ups and so on. And this was our first day of classes and you go to your first class and something's happening now as a freshman at Norwich University. You don't have a TV. You don't have a radio. You make phone calls when you're allowed to at certain times of the day. Uh, so there is a lot of talking amongst ourselves. What's happening? What is it? And you don't know until they tell you. And by the end of the day, it was pretty obvious that there was something big going on and they rolled TVs out in the hallways and we got to see what was happening. And uh, but it didn't 
you know, I, for all of us, it didn't end there, of course, but it was a bit different for us. You know, there was a lot of, you go to a military school and a lot of guys are in the reserves or national guard and the activation started within a week or a month of that. And, and then as you got to the end of the year, you had seniors who are graduating from college and, and many times, especially for the army, there was a, about a month or two where you had an opportunity to kind of get your things together and move out of school and, and get ready for your first assignment in the army. And a lot of people were graduating May 1st and shipping to whatever basic course or wherever they were going by May 15th, if not earlier. They were out the door, ready to go. Uh, so you always had a feeling in the back, you know, other than what was on the news, you kind of have a sense by what your friends are doing and what's happening that this is, you know, there, there's something around the corner for all of us. So you have four, you know, and for me, I had four years of college to decide you know, what was, you know, is the military right for me? Because now I'm seeing friends go to Iraq, go to Afghanistan, you know, classmates who are not coming home. So you, you have the hard decision of, uh, you know, is this the life for me? It, you know, am I going to finally put my name on the line like everyone has before and, and say, uh, this is worth defending? And, uh, you know, we I decided that that was the choice. And, I'm better for it in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of things happening in the way too, that, you know, you, you wish did it, but you know, that's, it's the way it is sometimes. It's a, it's an amazing story. I, um, one of the things when we were talking that, that, uh, that really struck me is that, that while you were, uh, there, you, you met your wife, and so you both ended up in the military at the same time. Can you can you talk a little bit about what that's like to have two partners in the military at the same time? Yeah, uh, we joke that dual military is not for the faint hearted. Um, it's not a it, it's you don't get extra points for being dual military. In a lot of ways, it can be it's tougher. There's. Um, there's decisions to be made for each of your careers on how, um, where to go and what to do. Or, uh, you know, are, are you deploying this this year or am I deploying next year? Or, well, I don't have a choice whether I am or not. I'm going and you're staying home. Um, I, 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 you could call it like tag team wrestling. So tag, you're in. I'm going into the fight. And then sometimes I tag you and I go wait outside and you're fighting. And then sometimes you're both fighting. And, and so, and it's not just war. I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you're home, life is still going on. You have bills, you have, uh, you have groceries that need to be bought. We have, you know, we had for my first deployment, uh, in 2010, my son was three months old when I left. So my wife is now in the middle of her company command time, uh, you know, which is a large undertaking in itself and a three month old that she's taking care of. And I'm in Iraq. So that's not an easy, you know, by no means is that an easy undertaking. I mean, if you go back the year before that, she was in Iraq and I was at home, you know, in command of my own. Uh, so it's not you you find you find your your normal uh, in all those situations. You find what works for both of you. Uh, and it's it takes a. Uh, I think it, it has strengthened our relationship in a lot of ways. We don't pull punches with each other anymore because it doesn't do us any good. And uh, you learn you learn what your relationship and what you're made of, I think. The reason that we um, spend time talking about things like this uh, at Indeed is that obviously whatever experience people bring with them um, shapes how they approach their job and and the workforce and uh, and of course being in the military is a job. Um, so one of the things you know I, I'd love to hear uh, a little bit about your transition when you when you left the military and joined the civilian workforce. What was that transition like for you? It's it, it was tough. I had a I had a. Uh... I had a, at first I was having a tough time with it. So it, it is a, it is a job. It's a profession, but the military turns into so much more. Um, you have people, friends, and uh, uh, that become your family. When your family isn't there, I come from a very nuclear family. Uh, we're we're together all the time, and 
you know, that we remade that in the army uh, with a lot of times, you know, it, we were our first duty station was Fairbanks, Alaska, the middle of play for us, the middle of nowhere, not the middle of nowhere at all, because it turned out to be a wonderful place. It's where we developed our relationship as a family and where we developed our our friendships that we still have, you know, people who I rely on for advice. And uh, when you say I'm going to leave that, uh, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. Uh, and, and the, the military in general gives you a lot of what you need. You don't have to think about your health care. You don't have to think about, uh, you know, you have to think about child care, but it's there for you on a military base. There's a lot of things that when you get out, you go, Oh man, I got to think about all this stuff. Uh, so it can be a daunting task. Um, and, and the other part is having to explain what it is you do in the military, uh, which can be really tough for a lot of people. Uh, how do I explain what an infantryman does to someone who's never been there or done that? And, and how do I translate that into, uh, a job that I can get, you know, in, that will sustain my family or, or, uh, you know, uh, be good for me in the long run. So it's, there's a lot of like factors other than just, I need a job that is going into your brain. And when you leave also with a family, you know, it just compounds all those and makes them that much uh, more difficult to navigate. But you, st- you know, you you find good people, uh, you find resources to help you, and uh, you know, and what I've what I think I've tried to do since I left was to pay that back to people getting out and say to them like, you're 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 gonna be fine. You, you, there's things to figure out, of course, but it's nothing you haven't ever figured out before. And it, it'll be you're, you're going to you're going to do great things. And, and I try to just give them that sense of, uh, you know, it's just another step. It's another mission. You'll be you, you can do it. So one of the things that's very clear from the, the military experience is that there's an incredible focus and, and opportunity around leadership development. Can you talk about some of the lessons that you learned from the military about leadership? I learned everything I know about leadership uh, from the military. I mean, practically and uh, and uh, academically. So you know, there the whole when when you're in college, for many of us, if you know it, whether it's a, a, a senior military college or one of the academies or even a a university that has reserve officer training corps ROTC. Uh, a, a lot of that is, I think a lot of, a lot of it is, some of it is tactics and, and, you know, understanding the craft of, uh, of being in the military, but a lot of it is leadership. Um, a good portion of it is leadership and understanding what, who you are as a, as a leader, uh, what it takes to be a leader, um, th- ways to lead, but then also being able to find your own way and all that, um, I mean, one of the toughest things in the military is that when you walk in, so if you walk into the military as a lieutenant like I did and you're 21, 22, 23 years old and you you become a platoon leader, if we're talking army, and you have, you know, could be upwards of, of 50 people, as little as 20 so people in your platoon, and you have to lead them. They're looking at you for the decisions. Well, the part they don't tell you when you're, when you're leading, teaching all this is, well, some of those, some of those men and women are going to be, you know, 16, 17 year old veterans. And in my case, you know, uh, you know, two, three tours to Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, people who know their stuff, uh, and know what they're doing. So you're walking in as the, as the Lieutenant and it's, it's a daunting task. Um, but you need to learn, uh, you know, that leadership isn't about, yelling and saying, go take that hill. Sometimes sometimes it's about, Hey, what do you think of this situation that we're in? How do I, how do we get out of this? Have you seen this before? And then knowing though, that whatever advice you get, you're making the ultimate decision. You have, you are the decider in all this stuff. They will, your team, when they start, when you start, when a team gets good and you start trusting each other, you make the hard decisions and they're going to execute it because they sometimes they they may not agree with what your decision is, but they know where you're coming from. They understand that hard decisions need to be made and they 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 know your your they trust you enough to put themselves in a, in a situation and, and know that you would do the same for them. 
So it's a, uh, it, it's it's a lot of uh, it's. I, I think the key word is trust in all that is trusting yourself, trusting each other, and uh, and and working hard for them as much as they work for you. So the the U.S. Mil- military is probably one of the most sophisticated organizations in the world when it comes to how they think about training and skills development beyond just the leadership part that that you talked about, and that translates um, certainly in, in your case and in, and in you know millions of others to bringing incredibly valuable skills and attributes into the, the job market. Can you talk a little bit about some of the things that make veterans fantastic employees? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I, one of the, one of the bit, one thing that I always think about and try to tell people is that uh, the military of today in and probably in the past is not the movies. Um, I could take parts of movies and tell you that's something that really happened or that's real. And uh, I think a lot of times you have to take the feeling of that, but people just look at it sometimes and think, well, that's what, just what you do. You just march places and, and go where people tell you to do. But the military of today is the most technical technical, and most de- one of the most demanding professions I've ever seen. It's more than just whatever is on your, uh, whatever your skill set is, whatever your MOS or military occupational skill is. Uh, I give the example a lot. When I first got out and I was doing security for another company, we were hiring a, a young, uh, a young uh, a man who, was at, who just got out of the military, uh, just got out of Afghanistan for that matter within the last six months or so. Uh, and um, he was an engineer and we were hiring for, for a secure, an operations center position. And the hiring manager wasn't quite sure if he had the skills. It just, his resume didn't seem like it just said that he was an engineer in the army and, and that he did route clearance and he wanted to know if I had some insight in it. So I walked in the interview and I, 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 I had a nice conversation with him. I said, what did you do when you were in Afghanistan? And he was like, Oh, I drove a Husky. I did route clearance and a Husky is a, is a mine resistant vehicle that is literally used to, you know, drive over mines or uh, IEDs and and get blown up. And I said, okay, well, did you have a did you have a, a GPS in your in your system in your uh, vehicle? Yeah, of course. I, I I'm like, did you put the encryption in yourself? Did you put in all your uh, your uh, your uh, your data? Absolutely, I did. I wouldn't let anyone else do it. Okay, did you have a the we call it a blue force tracker. It's a, it's it literally a navigate. It's it's a map overlay that shows all everyone's positions on the battlefield. You're able to send messages on there. So I said, did you run your blue force tracker? Did you were you able to send messages, alerts? Uh, did you you know did you work with other people across the battlefield? Absolutely. I, I mean, there's no way I was I was going to be allowed to not do that. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm like, did you? Were you able to use your radio? Were you able to, you know, uh, call, call, uh, you know, jump to different frequencies and call different people? Oh, absolutely. And it's like, and you did all this, you know, and this wasn't your full time job, was it? He goes, no, no, that's just what you do because it needs to be done, and that's the way it is. I was like, and I turned the hiring manager and said, this is an operate. This this guy can do operation center work, um, and it's. A lot of times for a lot of us is you don't realize the the extra, the additional duty or the things you're doing around your job are, are just as important of what the job is. Um, there's not a lot of route clearance in the United States, you know, clearing mines and things, of course, but all those other very intricate job, uh, intricate things that he was doing, even just maintaining his truck, uh, you know, performing oil changes and maintenance on his truck is is a huge deal and has value. And being able to pull those small little uh, 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 ideas or, or work that people have done can not only show a hiring manager that this person has skills we didn't even realize, maybe it shows that person like, maybe this is something I can do full time, that I can do more than just, uh, you know, route, infantry work or, or shoot cannons. So it, that that was always a big deal to me. Well, what else did you do in the military? What additional duties did you do? Because people will people will hire you for those. So, I, I think that's a a very clear um, uh, example of of how valuable those experiences are and what people can bring to the workplace. And yet, we have you know more than two hundred thousand veterans entering civilian life in the U.S. 
every year. Um, they're incredibly talented. They have this amazing relevant experience and yet so many of them find it incredibly challenging to find roles that they're qualified for. Why, why is that? Um, you know, some of it is just, uh, you don't get, you're not getting the training to kind of describe those things that I'm talking about. You know, how do I put that on a resume? Uh, you know, who's teaching you how to put that on a resume? Uh, there, the army gives you the, we used to joke that the army will, will, if, if you're doing something army, someone's probably done it before you and they wrote it down, uh, except for transitioning off. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, they'll give you a little bit here and there. And then it's kind of like, thanks. Thank you for your service. And you're moving on. Um, and, and that's where I think guys like uh, guys like me or, or anyone who has spent any time in the military or, or cares about the military uh, and and what our, our what our service members are doing after the military need to take the time to kind of learn about those steps and help them with their resume building and help them with their interview skills and uh, and really kind of show them that they have all these skills they're all right there it's just just putting them onto paper or, or, or showing them how to do it. What are some of the things that, that we as Indeed, who sit between hundreds of millions of, of job seekers and employers, how can we help veterans and employers better understand how these skills are transferable? I think we've de- we started developing some great things on the website to help, uh, to help capture um, you know, a lot of occupational skills. Uh, we've done as, as part of the IRG, we've done a lot of, uh, uh, of webinars and, you know, um, uh, and different kinds of, uh, events to bring, bring, um, bring veterans in and show the support that we, that people have for them and show them that they, that, you know, it's, it's not just about that, what they did in the military, that one job skill. It's about a lot of different things. And there's people there to help. And uh, it's, it's really great to kind of be part of that and, and push for, for veterans to kind of get that, uh, that help that they need. It's, it, it can be tough for people to, to uh, they just, you know, it can be tough for people to kind of understand uh, you know, how to transition off the military and, and really find their worth again. Um, I talked to someone uh, a few weeks ago. It was just, I just can't seem to figure out how to get to the next level, you know? And it's just a lot, some of it's patience. You feel like you're at a certain level in your military career and you decide I need to make a change. And it's a lot of what I felt too. And and you have to go and, and look for that help and say, you know, I don't know this. Uh, and, and let people help you with that stuff. And we do a lot of that stuff here. A, you know, a lot of it's just support, just knowing, just having a company like us and people like us in our IRG and just all around the entire company know that someone is like, ha- they take the time to know a veteran or know what help they might need is huge. And I, th- and it pays, it, it might not pay dividends directly with, a job right now, but that confidence that the things that they've done is a multiplier and not a negative detractor is huge for them. So you're an active member here at Indeed in the Veterans and Allies Inclusion Resource Group. Can you talk a little bit about the work that the IRG does to help our veterans and to, and to help create allies? Sure. I, I you know, I, I, I think our our IRG is wonderful in 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 one of the simple ways is just allies. Uh, it, veterans in general can be very um, very inclusive, you know, exclusive people. We want to stick together, which is great. We but we we know what we know, and and it, and it can be at times, you know, you don't want anyone else to know, or no one could ever understand me. That can be the thought process, and uh, the idea of inclusivity I suppose as opposed to exclusivity is a huge deal and I think what veterans of you know the global war on terror and and our this younger generation that's coming up needs to understand need wants and needs uh, and I think our 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 IRG really strives for that type of inclusiveness um, it's not just about being a veteran you know it's not 
I don't personally with our RG, I don't personally care if you were a veteran. You're here. Let's what do you want to talk about? Um, and then we we and that thought process and that uh, feeling is pushed out for all those external external events that we were talking about. You know, what do you want to do? How do we how do we make you a part of this? Is a huge is a huge thing. A lot, you know, the other part of it is a lot of veterans are just looking for community outside of the military. You know, it's great to be exclusive with the VFW and those are great organizations. Uh, I'll never take away from them. They're, they're amazing and do amazing things. But when you pull in, you know, a civilian who uh, has no ties to the military and they just want to be a part of it and uh, they want to know how they can help and what they can do, it, it makes a, it, it will make a veteran think, oh, wow, there, there's more. It's more than just thank you for your service. It, it's it's deeper than that. And, and that's things that we're tackling here in the IRG. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to do it. And I, I love that we're at the forefront of a lot of that. So one of the things that I've seen really clearly in in work with the IRGs and, and bringing together different people from different groups and and members and, and allies is that the the awareness that that um, folks can develop of how what's going on in the world can impact different people differently based on your background and your experience there might be a story on the news that to, to one person is just oh that's that's what's happening in the world um, and to other people it can have uh, a real uh, emotional resonance and so, in the news right now, after after 20 years, the U.S. has announced that it's a it's planning to end its effectively its operations in Afghanistan. And, and as a veteran, having been deployed during that time to Afghanistan, how how has that news impacted you? It's a uh, I've I've reflected it, I I reflected on it a lot, and uh, it's a it's a weird feeling for I mean, and you I think with a lot of different events in your life it's common to have a lot of different emotional feelings all at the same time, which makes it boggling and not, under, you know, you don't understand what it could be, you know, uh, it, in ways I miss it. Uh, and then, you know, I clarify that in my head is I, I don't necessarily miss a war. I miss my friends. I miss what, what came of that, the good things that came of it, what I learned about myself. Um, and I, and a lot of people probably have those feelings. Uh, and, and then at the same time, I, I am, you know, I can be completely distraught over things that, you know, did or didn't happen or, or whatever the case was. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a weird feeling, uh, too, with, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, it's, it's 20 years is a long time for a war, no matter what. But for some of us, that's, that's all of our twenties. <laughs> You know, that's all of, that's most of my 30s. So I got out of high school and I was thinking about war in some form or fashion or going to it or coming back for it from it or training someone to go to it for 20 something years, which is it. Can, you don't I think you don't realize the emotional toll sometimes until you stop and you reflect on that and go, oh, man, this is ending. And uh, and it's. It can be tough and and not tough and fun and you think about things and you talk to friends and it feels better and and then it you know it's it, it's something you live with and something you you know you've done and you you do your best if you have if you're working through something you do your best to to just keep going. The pandemic has uh, has clearly tested the resilience and adaptability of of everyone. As a veteran, how did the events of the last 16 months or so, how, how did that affect you personally? Um, it's, in a lot of ways, the last question informed the way I was going to, you know, inform how I would respond to the pandemic. You know, uh, you know deployments, going to, you know, a, a different country and learning something completely different and at your whole world just being upended and trying to find that new normal is exactly what I think we all just started to learn about. I mean, there's there's different, you know, it's different for everybody, um, but you you get put into a situation and you don't necessarily know quite know how you're gonna how you're gonna get out of it or what's gonna come or what tomorrow is, 
but you you just find your new normal. I think like we all have here, you know, we're doing things, you know, you figure out Zoom and you roll with the punches when lights go out and you just continue to keep going and you find you find your way through things, you know. Um it's really hard when you stop and you look back and or you look and you know, you look things from 30,000 feet and you're looking down and Everything is just unimaginable and ungraspable, graspable. And I, I can't do this. How long is this going to happen? I don't know. And you start asking all those questions that don't really have answers yet, or you know what's going to happen. And when you take, when you just stop for a minute and just, what am I doing right now? Where am I right now? What has to be done? Laundry still has to be done. <laughs> Work still has to be done. That email is not going to answer itself. You know, I have to cook dinner. Well, those are things we've always ever done, right? It's not, that's not different. So let's just fo- let, let me focus on those, right? Um, I wrote in my notes when I was getting ready for this is we used to, when we have fit, when you have a fitness test in the, in the army, you, you do push ups for a minute, you do, uh, sit ups for a minute, and then you run for two minutes. And we used to have sergeants to walk around and like trying to get you motivated. And they would say things like, you can do anything for two minutes. You can do anything for two minutes. That's easy. Two minutes. And I, I don't know why that always stuck with me. And in my head, I would always just say, like, I could do anything for two minutes. And then somewhere it came, it, you know, it's like, oh, I got to go. I have to go to this training event for three weeks. It was like, well, I could do anything for three weeks. What's three weeks? That's that's not that's not a big deal. And then you, you do it again. It's like, well, you're going to Afghanistan for six months. It's like, well, I had six months. That's I that's a that's easy. That's a school year. I could do six months. That's easy. I've done that before. And then, you you know, and, and you just, and when I thought about it that way, and I would do it during the pandemic, it's like, we've been doing this for four months. Oh, I can do anything for four months. I'm doing it for eight months. Eight months. We already did the eight months. I mean, what's the difference? Let's do another one. And uh, when you kind of, when I, well, for me, and when I think of it that way, it, it takes away all of the, all of that worry. I was like, well, you, you've already done it for this amount of time. You might as well keep doing what you're doing. Um, and it, it's. It, 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 it gives you, it gives you a little bit right in that moment, not to say that you don't go back to it and start, you know, looking at it all big again and say, oh man, that's a lot. And then you just have to pull yourself back in. So it's just, it's the way you, it's the way we get through things. It's the way you start to figure it out in your own brain, how to deal with whatever adversity you're, you're dealing with. That's really uh, amazing. <laughs> I remember when we when we met last week, you uh, something stuck with me that you you had said that uh, no plan survives first contact, and uh, mm-hmm. it's it's a really helpful perspective to go into life with that uh, things are not necessarily going to go the way that you uh, that you think they're going to, and that can apply in really big things like getting deployed to Afghanistan and in little mm-hmm. things like the lights going out and. And I think the training in that experience is, is uh, it helps um, in, in almost everything we do. And uh, well, it, to, we could keep talking for a long time, but I'd like to just wrap up um, with the, the, the way that we usually wrap these conversations up, which is just looking back over the, the pandemic and, and thinking about um, from your personal experience, what, what's one thing that has happened that gives you some optimism for the future? You know, um, I think about when I got back from, well, when I got back from Afghanistan, especially when I got back from Iraq, but mostly Afghanistan, you know, I think a lot of us, you do this kind of mental decompression where, you know, you take whatever, whatever your thought process, whatever was going on. And, you know, I, I think a lot for a lot of us, you go, you go to Iraq or Afghanistan and you take all your emotions and you put them in a box and you take that box and you put it in your footlocker or wherever and you don't bring it out until you're home again cuz it's you know it's uh it, you have you can't you have moments where you just your emotions are not <laughs> useful uh unfortunately and uh whatever you're doing just needs to get done and there's no time to feel uh and 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 it, and that can be tough so you come home and you just you you open that box again and you start to like reflect on on what you've been, what you've been doing. And, and I think for a lot of us, for me, it gives you a different sense of who you are and, uh, what you're doing in your life and, uh, and what it means to be alive. Uh, and, and what it, what is that? Uh, and, and you start, and I think that's just, 
it really starts to uh, informs people's future, I think. And I think we're going to start noticing people, you know, making choices for themselves and in a good way that that's that's better, that's best for them. And in turn will be best for all of us. Uh, you you don't necessarily you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. You, you don't you don't get to know that. But you know, you're here right now and you know, you're, you're where you're at and you can, you, you have to take what you've had, what you got and move forward. And, and what thing, whatever's going to happen is, is all you can do is, is take your perspective and what you've learned in your experiences and make the best decision you can in that moment and, and move with it. And, uh, and that's, um, I think that gives me hope that people are starting to get that perspective that it, it it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of, you have to be, you have to know what's going on in your life and, 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 and be, um, and work with what you have. Uh, I can go on for days about this. I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> we can do anything for four, 496 days. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I already did. We already did 496 <laughs> days. I mean, that was the easy part. It's only one more day tomorrow. Well, Mario, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for for sharing your experience and and your perspective. Um, and really, thank you so much for everything that you do to help keep Indeed safe and secure and to help people get jobs. Cheers. Thanks. 